All right. Episode 12. I don't know what episode it is. <laughs> Welcome to the Rosa and Rhea podcast, where two sisters talk about sex, love, and relationships, but mostly sex. Uh, today we want to talk about, I mean, I think we want to talk right away about Me Too movement, consent, and we want to go deeper into it. We've been having some really interesting, intense conversations over the past few days, so I think we want to like just uh, concisely do a little recap. I think part of this big problem with this whole um, issue with consent and making women feel comfortable and uncomfortable is a lot of men can't relate to what it's like to be a woman in the world. Um, They don't understand how scary it can be um, in just regular places, um, in the work environment, um, in coffee shops, in stores, walking around on the street, yeah. um, in Ubers, everywhere. Um, it's a very scary place for women. So men need to be sensitive to the fact, um, to these facts, right? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, like I was, t- and I would, if I had kids and one of them was a boy, I would teach my boys this too. But You know, my mom always said, like, you have to be very aware of what you're doing when you're walking at night. You always walk on the brightest streets. You always make sure that you're you're moving your eyes around just in case something happens. You know where you're going to run or you know who you're going to, like, wave to. You know, like, the closest place that will hear you if you scream. I mean, like, this was an everyday conversation, but definitely she's like, if you want to be walking around at night, even in a very safe city like Vancouver, these are the things you're going to have to constantly be aware of. Yes, and men never have to do that, ever, right? Um, You don't tell your boys, oh, you got to be careful to walk around. (laughs) Yeah, women, the women out there, you never know what's going to happen. If you see one coming towards you, they might harass you. They might catcall you. If you see a woman (laughs) with a big hoodie on walking down the street, cross over to the other side. You might get raped (laughs) by this woman. Um, It's totally, it doesn't happen, right? The the reverse doesn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, there are dangers that men face. I'm not saying that that's not the case. Just as far as like the harassment goes, feeling uncomfortable by the uh, opposite sex. Yes. That's what we're talking about. So, you know, making uh, women feel comfortable is really important because a lot of the times they feel uncomfortable. Um, So there's lots of ways that you can do that. Um, One thing we talked about last time, consent right? That's just on a relationship basis when you're getting to know someone or you're in a relationship. Um, Women feel most comfortable um, when you ask them before you do things. Yeah. Like being in on the game, like we talked about before, whatever the fantasy is, letting them in on it. The other thing is when women do feel uncomfortable and they say something about it, um, you have to listen to them. Yeah. That's very important. You don't push that to the side. You don't disregard what they were saying. You don't ask about the circumstances of the situation. Um, a woman says she was felt, you know, felt uncomfortable in a situation. That's the truth. That's the bottom line. And I think that's also where we have to start. Um Especially when we're getting into this Me Too thing, there's all these workplace issues, um, all this questioning that's going on. Um, you know, these types of questions, you know, what was a woman wearing? Um, was she drunk? How old is she? How Does she have a boyfriend? All these types, that has to end immediately. Yeah. Um, it's not cool. And I'll tell you why, in my opinion. I mean, maybe you can relate to this, Rosa. I think as a woman... Um, and, you know, knowing other women and, um, you know, even in 2018, women don't say a peep. Um, everything is a secret. These Mm. systems have been put in place to silence women for them to not come forward. So now they're conditioned in a certain way. So if the woman works up a courage to say, this made me feel uncomfortable or this didn't feel right to me, you best believe that she's meaning it. Yeah. Because the likelihood of her even saying that to begin with is so unlikely. Yeah, right? exactly. And even me or us who were raised to say everything that you feel and to feel completely okay about it, standing up for yourself. When I do stand up for myself sometimes, I still walk away feeling badly about it. Yeah, Like exactly. as if like I did something wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, Rhea was like kind of harassed in the coffee shop the other day. Men made her feel uncomfortable. And she came by and told me about it. And I could tell she felt a little bad. Like there's like this... Um, 
ickiness you feel after you look at someone and say, no, what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, because we're definitely. taught not to chastise. We're taught not to put people down uh, or stand up for yourself. Or, yeah, speak up. It's, people don't, like, people don't speak up about anything. And so here's a perfect <laughs> example. I mean, I was in this very busy coffee shop with people everywhere, tons of people working in the place, tons of people drinking coffee. And these uh, three men were audibly um, discussing uh, my boobs right in front of my face. Yeah. Like, I wasn't even there. And no one said a peep. And finally, I just had enough. And I said, you know what? I can hear what you're saying. This is really inappropriate to be talking about my body like this. Please stop. Yeah. And they didn't even apologize. Yeah. They just sort of skirted out. And not even a a single person in that whole uh, room said anything except for me. And of course, I'm like, well, yeah, I felt bad, right? You feel uncomfortable that you had to say something like that to a stranger. But listen, I could have been naked in that coffee shop, it gives zero person the right to speak about my body in that way. That is not cool. Yeah. This gave me the idea of like, because a lot of guys like to like see it reverse gender wise, right? Just to like get the idea and understanding. Like if a man walked in and he, you know, like sometimes guys wear sweatpants and you can see their dick a little bit, the outline of it or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. to me, that that's hot. Yeah. Uh, I, I would notice it maybe. And say I notice it and I in within earshot of him and everyone else like hey Rhea check out that dick on that guy look at that way that it falls I can see it I, I bet it's really big when it gets hard that's right right <laughs> yeah that's exactly because right that's exactly what happened to you yeah it's that's exactly exactly yeah. what happened to me yeah um and that would not be cool the and other way around and, so and it's not just in this kind of talk it doesn't just make me feel uncomfortable. It doesn't make the guy, just the guy in the sweatpants feel uncomfortable. It's every single person in that room that has to hear that fucking shit yeah. that feels uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, I would encourage people that if they see something this, like this happen, you know, I we are in Vancouver and I've been traveling a lot. Vancouver is terrible as far as this kind of thing. I find people here are very quiet. Yeah, they, they keep don't their say eyes a down. lot. Um, everyone's very reserved. But I encourage people to step in. If you see a woman um, being made to feel uncomfortable by someone else or being put at risk or you, you get that feeling, you know, I think we've all had that feeling where you're like, this something's a little off here. Mm-hmm. Um, speak up. Say yeah. something. Well, um, and I think for me, the most comfortable that way that I would do that is I go to the person. I say, are you okay? You know, you you... Uh, ask the person because right. we're not yes. encouraging people to go up to guys who are harassing women and like get involved that way because I think that could be dangerous. Yeah. But just to like snap someone out of the interaction because they a lot of times something's happening to you, you're like, what the hell is going on? But it's all happening so fast that you can't, um, you know, you don't have a lifeline, but you could be that person's lifeline. And if you're just like, hey, are you okay? Even if it's a man, a woman, whatever. If you sense that someone's in a position where they're uncomfortable uh, and that that could be all they need to be like, oh, oh, hey, do you, l- let's go talk over here. Thanks so much. Yeah, definitely. Whatever might happen. They could be like, yeah, I'm fine. This is my husband. Or they could be like, no, I'm not okay. This guy needs to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Um, there or are, anything between. There are. I agree with you. Um, that's always a good call, reaching out to the person. But, you know, in the case that where I was, mm-hmm. um, I would have preferred someone to have stepped in right away. Yeah. Um, I really would have. I want. I would have liked to a third party, whether it's a bystander or a manager or a person working at the front, to say, you can't talk like this. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, because someone did ask me if I was okay. And I kind of just, as a woman, I did the perfect woman thing. I said, oh, yeah, I'm okay. Well, but that I was didn't after, really, right? Yeah, it was after, but I didn't really mean it. Okay, that's a good point. That's <laughs> Do you know what point. I mean? Yeah. Because... Everyone, including the victim, is so paranoid and worried about making a scene Mm -hmm. sometimes that you say, you know what I mean? Yeah. You kind of let it, you brush it to the side. You say, oh, maybe I am okay. Maybe I just got through that, you know? And Um, I don't, and this is something that I don't think a lot of men know, but that happens a lot when women get raped. Yes. Uh, Women say, you know, they go back and they, because we've all seen what it's like to prosecute a rape. And I think that they come from this standpoint where, like, well, he's never going to go to jail for this. Um, but I, 
so they it's like they go back and think they're like oh well you know I was kind of drunk and I sort of said it was okay and all day that day I'd been telling him that I wanted to sleep with him so you know what he did I didn't want like but I did the, the entire act I said was fine the sex part I said was okay just not what he did yeah um and I think that's very common uh and I don't think that men realize that um because not a lot of men are rapists um I mean there are lots out there that you guys would be shocked but um, I think the average nice guy doesn't realize that when a woman gets raped, that that's how she feels. She feels like she has to go inside herself and find the blame within her. Yeah. And because of the systems that have been put in place, it's so difficult. You know what? It's unbelievable. And women, and still in 2018, a woman comes forward and says she was raped and people still don't believe her. Yeah. But that's the but problem. But you know what, Rhea? The amount of women who have told me that they've been raped recently... They're never going to come forward. Yeah, I know. I and know. Everybody keeps it a secret and stays silent. And I, what I love is they. I, I've been told, and we've been. Sh- I've been sharing in my friend groups, and we've been having really honest, open conversations um, a lot lately because there's been a lot of guys that have come up, and a lot by by a lot, I mean like five this year. Five people have told me that they were raped this year. Yeah. And this is, this is secrets, people. This is like secrets that our people keep, they may have told Rosa, but they have not told other people. No one knows about this. These people are still walking around. Yeah. Um, they could be still raping other people yeah. secretly. Yeah. Um, we don't know. But I think personally, it starts, like if we really want to make a difference, it starts very basic. When a woman says she's uncomfortable, you believe her. If a woman says she was raped, you believe her. Yeah. Um, that's the bottom line. I mean, I know these women aren't saying it yet, yeah. but it starts with just men and women not questioning, not trying to make investigations happen. Yeah. Um, you take her fucking word for it. Yeah. Um, and listen, it has nothing to do, like we just said, what a woman was wearing, what's, if she was at the bar, how many, how many drugs she had done that night, how fucked up she was. None of that. If matters. she said she was raped, she was raped. Yeah. If you go to a strip joint and the woman is upstage na- on the stage naked, um, that does not give you the right to touch her yeah. um, if she doesn't want you to touch her. Because there's very specific rules. Um, but... Th- the rules have to do with the law. And I think when something bad happens to you, you start rationalizing in a different way. Um, and like I've said this example before, but even more specifically, the tea example. Yes. Like again, uh, you, this person, you drink tea with them all the time. You talk about how you're going to go home and drink tea, but it turns out that that night they want to drink tea. They want to fucking shove it down your throat. But you guys had never discussed this before. Yeah. And you say, you actually, you know what? I don't feel like tea anymore. It's too hot. I'm going to go to bed. And they take the tea and they shove it down your throat and they make you drink it. That is rape. Yeah, exactly. Right? And like obviously this tea thing, it's I'm trying to make it the most simple because you can get very complicated. It gets human dynamics are very co- complex. But when you talk about it in the terms of tea, it's like, yeah, of course. If you told somebody, no, I don't want to drink the tea anymore, then it wouldn't be you wouldn't rationalize it later if they fucking threw the tea at you or ch- made you chug it while choking you. Yeah, definitely. Then everyone could agree that that's not okay and yeah. that you said no, even though all day long you want to drink this tea. Exactly. And there is no difference, except for of course it's complica- complicated, complex human dynamics. But there's no difference between the consent there. Yes. And I think that's what we have to understand. Yeah. I mean, cons- it all starts with consent. Yeah. It also, um, it starts with consent and also trusting a woman um, with what she says. Yeah. But you have to believe her, whatever she says. Um, also, like Rosa's saying, if a guy, you know, if you're a guy and you get invited over to a girl's house and you guys have talked about having sex... Um, or if you've had sex, or you've had sex thirty before, times, or even your boyfriend and girlfriend, and you get over there and she changes her mind, she's changed her mind. Like that's the bottom line. Yeah, don't convince her. No, unless you guys have a game that you already have in place that you've talked about consensually beforehand, where you want to play a game and you want to. Yeah. She wants to say, no, actually, I changed my mind. You know, like there's there's a lot out there, and we talk about this all the time. We say you should get to know your kinks, your deepest desires, and your fantasies. And you should, you should do them. But the thing is, is you have to, you have to 
let the other person in on it. Yeah, absolutely. So, right? If you like something really rough, if you love um, to suck women's feet, whatever it may be, she might not feel comfortable with that. And the way that you find out is you have a conversation about it beforehand. Yeah. Not after the fact, because that is when you can really damage somebody. Yeah, right? and you can find these. Rose is absolutely right, and you can find these people um, everywhere, everywhere. Where you say, "Listen, I mean, ages ago we talked about that guy I met on Tinder. He wanted to literally uh, come over, um, deep throat me, and walk out the door." Okay, yeah. um, that's okay with me. But as long as we have a conversation about it first, yeah, you know what I mean, which we yes. didn't end up doing. Yeah, but there are people like myself where you know we're mature adults. I get it. You want to do something spontaneous spontaneous. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I have issues with that word. So. Uh, you want to be yeah. spontaneous. Um, but you can still be spontaneous and it's much more exciting when two people are in on it. I yeah, promise you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the woman gets turned on by it. Yeah. Um, it's such, that's the other thing about uh, women are so often, um, I think, left behind on these sexual uh, experiences a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the guys aren't really caring so much if they come. Um, they're not really feeling a part of it. And this can be very hot. Bring her in on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, encourage her to uh, get in on the game. I sit around with my girlfriends all the time. Like very recently, we were like, yeah, if a guy wanted to smack my face and like, you know, like whip his cock out and smack that on my face, like all these things um, that sound extreme would be completely inappropriate if they weren't discussed beforehand. But if they asked me to do it, of course I would. If I yeah. like a guy, I, oh yeah, let's experiment. Let's give it a try. You know, and then talk about after and be like, well, it didn't really do much for me. Like, how did you like it? Or like, you know, I, I'm always looking for more exciting, adventurous things to do. But I, you have to tell the person. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, this is not just like a willy-nilly, oh, I'll give it a try and see how it goes situation. No, no. You have to give a con the conversation a try yeah. and see how that goes. And keeping in mind that uh, women, um, you really need to, you might have to, she might not want to talk about these things so quickly and you might have to really open up with her and be a little bit vulnerable yourself first and then she'll have the permission to be vulnerable back. Yeah. Um, yeah like, because women are so secretive. Yeah, like not DMing and being like, I want this. Like you, you know, like there's, yeah. there's a dance to it. There's a dance to everything, especially, you know, human connection and interaction. Um, it's very, you got to be gentle um, and you have to just always be really, really sure about whether uh, he or she wants it. And dick pics are the perfect example. Um, I have the consensual dick pics that I've received where I have consented to them. That has been extremely hot for me. So hot. So hot. But yeah. I will tell you. A hundred percent of the dick pics that I got that were non-consensual made me feel disgusted inside. Yeah, and like kind of like you want to cry. Yeah. It's weird. It was, it would be. It's the exact opposite. And Rosa has said this before and it's exactly like that. It's like if a guy were literally out of nowhere to pull his dick out in front of you and show you. Yeah. That doesn't make women feel comfortable. That makes them <laughs> feel the absolute opposite. It doesn't yeah. matter if she knows you or what. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make me feel good. Yeah. Um, I need to know that it's coming. Yeah. And I think every woman would probably agree with me. And I think that there's a saying for this because there's obviously many gray areas. Men are wondering, you know, well, what about men who get raped? Like there's, there's so much more to this conversation. Um, but I think at the, the bottom line is, and what we have to remember, like men are afraid that women will laugh at them. Right? Yes. Women are afraid they're going to get murdered. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. 100%. And, so, and that is, you know, from a long hundreds of years of women being murdered. And still to okay. this day. And, and people doing day. nothing about it. Yeah. So it comes from somewhere very deep and real. And so I think you have to keep that in mind. Like, yes, oh, equality b would be really, really nice. But there is a very long history of, um, you know, mistreating, murdering, beating uh, women. So, so I think you should just say that again. Women are, sorry, men are. Men are afraid of being laughed at. Women are afraid of being murdered. Yeah. And that's exactly right. We're not even exaggerating there. Women are literally afraid even me and Rosa yeah. have those same fears. And that's just from being a woman, being yeah. born a woman. Yeah. That's every woman. Yeah. There's not a woman on this planet that hasn't been worried about that at one point in her life. Exactly. Um, and I don't think guys have to deal with that so much. Yeah. 
um, because this basically comes up because we're encouraging everyone to follow their fantasies, you know? Yeah. And what part of that step is to um, get consent, say it out loud, share that with another person to see if they'll do it with you. And that can be really scary face to face. Yes, it can be very scary. The internet's great because it creates a little bit of a barrier, right? So you might be able to experiment with some of these things that are scary, like Rosa says, face to face, but you can have a separation. Um, between. Yeah. So, so no one's getting hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also easy, I find, on the internet to ask for consent. It's very, send yeah. a simple message. Yeah. You can send it three or and four times. There's no gray area. There's no gray area. Right? Um, it's like yes or no. <laughs> and you right. see it written in front of you. Yeah. I mean, some people just ignore that, whatever. But yeah, okay. it's, it is it um, is a good uh in between her. And what you can do, especially when you're exploring different kinks um, or BDSM, is you can um, do some skate. Like we talk about scaling um, these kinks. Internet is the perfect place. Yeah. So, like, for instance, I was interested um, in the daddy, dom, baby, girl dynamic, but I didn't really have any experience or necessarily the confidence to meet up with someone in person. So I started um, just a text-only relationship, basically. Yeah. And it was very satisfying. Yeah, and you learned a lot, and it was super hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can send messages, you can send videos, you can send snaps or Insta posts or that sort of disappear. Um, it could be super, super hot um, and you can both be in on it and it's good to try these different things. And it's definitely a lot safer too because, um, like I said, no one's necessarily getting hurt. Oh, and logistically, it's way easier too, right? Yeah, logistically. Uh, I mean, it could be way easier. Like f- the reason I'm thinking this is because, uh, you know, you want to fuck a guy, you have literally have to book it a week in advance. Yes. Right? Because you have to see them in person. Yeah. Um, So if you're looking to explore something, learn a a little bit about a new kink, and you want to do that on the internet, you could be like, sure, I'm free in 10 minutes. Because you don't need to shower. You don't need a clean house. Yeah, exactly. just go on your computer. Yeah. And there's many different options. You can use webcams, all different kinds of things. You can just use your phone. Um, And I got, again, I had the daddy, dom, baby girl thing. And then as we have been um, exploring our own uh, sexualities, me and Rosa, I've thought, you know, I love being a sub, um, but I'm also, I have a little bit of interest in returning the favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So why... Which means being a dom. That's That's what returning the favor means. the other reason I'm interested in this is because so many men... um, have requested this from me, whether it be on Fet Life or even anywhere, Instagram, all over the internet, people are asking me to dom them, um, which I found very interesting. I don't know if it was part of the way that I look, my body, um, or whatever, um, but I thought, why not dab? I, I don't know if I have the confidence to do this in person, but why not give it a, a little bit of a try? Yeah. Um, so I decided to, to do um, set up a situation, a virtual sort of online thing with the guy um and i dom him in what way uh, <laughs> he is a uh he wants to be in a chastity cage like a cock cage a cock cage okay yes um and <laughs> generally i mean i had to do a lot of research before i agreed to this arrangement but generally um it's the preference for the guy in the cock cage or the chastity belt to have someone hold on to the key. That's part of the power dynamic, right? Because if he just had the key, well, then he would just unlock it whenever he wanted and do whatever he wanted. Part of it is his cock being in the control of someone else. That's the the hot part. Okay, I I have to admit, I Googled, like, the um, images of cock cages, and they are, like, intense. Do you know what it looks like? Yes. Is it metal? (laughs) Yeah. So that's part of it, is that he enjoys, and I've obviously consented to this. We had a whole discussion before any of this started um, via text message. Um, he sends me pictures, right? Because then, I mean, he's in another country. Mm -hmm. So then I know that he's wearing it, um, that he hasn't taken it off. And yes, it's very tight, very tight. So there are some safety concerns. What about if he's like walking around? Can you see it? Um, you, I don't think you can, but it almost, I've noticed in our messaging that it gives him a little bit of a thrill when he thinks someone might have noticed. Oh, I see. (laughs) So there is, I mean, I think everyone's probably different when it comes to that. Um, but there is a bit of, um, we talked about this last episode in, in taboos, but some people get off on a little bit of shame, 
right? Oh, yeah. So I think most that... Most people. <laughs> yeah, most people. <laughs> That's right. So I think that is definitely part of it for him. Um, but he gets a kick out of, you know, wearing it all the time to work, to the gym, um, playing tennis, what have you. Wow. And, and his then, tennis shorts, like, wouldn't you be able to see it? Because I looked at these pictures, these images, right? And they're, like, quite... It's, like, a big, like contraption made yeah. of metal that yes. sticks out. And yeah, and then when you get hard, your cock squishes even more. And so they and that's so, what he likes. Yeah, he likes it. So he likes to be teased. He likes his cock to get really hard. Wow. Um, and so I'm kind of experimenting cuz I'm I'm learning too. Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying to figure out um, a guy with this kind of dynamic, what turns him on the most? Because I take a lot of, I love pleasuring other people. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that this is like... And doms, like they're the biggest givers of pleasure, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and Rosa mentioned this before. It is a bit of work being a dom. Yeah. Um, I'm not really at the stage where it fully turns me on yet, but I think I can get there. Ooh, I um, like that. <laughs> which is actually called like a switch when you're both a sub and a dom. But anyways, we'll talk about that in another episode. <laughs> but the point is, is that... Um, um, I'm learning and I'm having to do research, you know, safety, of course, is paramount. Um, also like what kinds of things, when a person is into this, what kinds of things can I say will, that will turn them on? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, who? And plus there's an on. It's a we, game. It is a game. And it's also because it's virtual. I can, we can do, it can be really fun. So he loves, for instance, to get little tasks for me to for him to do. Uh-huh. So I assign him little like chores or, you know, like the other day he's traveling and I got him to cur- uh, um, bury the key in the backyard. <laughs> Stuff like that. Oh my God. <laughs> I made sure it was safe first. You know, like, is it going to rain a lot? Like, are we going to lose the key? Right? Oh so there's goodness. all these little... You looked up the weather. And you're so cute. <laughs> That's really kind, though. Um, nice. And he actually said that. He was like, he, and I encourage him to give me feedback. And I think that's really important anytime you're having a relationship of any kind with someone that you give and receive feedback. And he says, I like how kind you are, but you're also strict. So I get a little kick out of that, too, right? Uh, that I'm doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it I brings me a lot told. of pleasure to know that I'm bringing him pleasure. Yeah, I love being told I'm doing a good job. <laughs> There's nothing better. And I want to keep doing it. And I'm like, yeah. what else can I do to make degrade you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind but strict. <laughs> How very nice. So um, that's just one example how you can you can do this stuff. I mean, technology is incredible. The kinds of things you can do, you can get vibrators that work um, from one country. You know, you can, I could be, um, he actually bought a vibrator that he can put in his butt that I can control. Oh, my God. Right? Wow. So there's those types of things that we can do as well. Cool. Um, there's all kinds of options. But it's a good way of scaling kink. Good way of scaling BDSM, trying new things without going off the deep end. And oh, yeah, because, like, if a guy came up to you and he's like, I have a cock cage, and he's in real life, and you're just like, ah, cock cage, no thanks. Yeah. But if, you you know, on the internet, you're like, I, I could get into this. I could take my time researching. I don't always have to be around him. Like, yes. Like, the less awkwardness. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can really take your time that way. It's not an excuse. Even if it's online, though, it's not an excuse not to communicate. You still have to communicate. It's not good to ghost people. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's a good um, point. So even, you still have to re- recognize that you're dealing with a person, but it is a little bit more flexible, um, and it gives you that chance to practice being an adult instead of a... Yeah. Well, it's funny because we are... It's, it, it, these are games that adults play, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's um, fun, you guys. It's fun. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like unbelievable, right? Yeah, so think about some games you want to play. It doesn't have to necessarily be sexual, but if it, if it's a game you want to play with another person, you have to tell them about the game. Yeah, it's not like a one-sided thing. It's yeah. like it's a team event, right, where you discuss things, yeah. you give and receive feedback, you make uh, agreements before you even start, How are, what are the rules of the game? Game. Yeah. Um, and people, guys especially can relate to this. Yeah. Sports. You don't just go on the field and see what happens. No. Right? There's a very specific, and everyone has a good time, uh, you know, and the outcome is you, you're not too sure what's going to happen, but there's specific rules that are followed. So yeah, I think exactly. men can relate to that a lot. Yeah. I have a first I want to share. I feel like we can always keep uh, updating these firsts. Um, And this was a goal for me. I've talked about it in lots of other podcasts, including orgasms. Like, I really wanted to squirt. (laughs) So, 
<laughs> so I've been trying really hard. I bought, like, I go on the internet. I watch girls squirting. I see what they're doing. I've, like, bought toys. I've just, like, been trying really hard on my own. Um, nothing was really working. But then I bought the little Lilo. Rhea was there. We went to women's wear. I bought the little Lilo. It's like a, a sh- flat egg, and it vibrates in all these different frequencies. It's super cool. It's expensive, but it does a lot of different things. Um, it even vibrates if you have music on, what it, music nearby. It'll vibrate to the beat of the music, which is cool. Anyways, so Very I just... Cool. I The reason I bought it is because I thought it would be fun um, for partner play. Right? It's small. It fits in your hand. It's not like this big old thing you take out. Like, do you mind if I use my vibrator? Like, it's not intimidating. It's just really, really small and cute, but strong. Uh, And so I, like, I wanted to use it when I'm on top between myself and the guy's um, stomach. Because I, you know, I'm, that's how I come when I'm on top. Uh, I rub on their stomach, but you know, sometimes a guy has like their dicks a little too long. It kind of hurts if you're doing that. Anyways, there's all different reasons why you'd want a toy. So I literally used <laughs> for like 10 seconds and I <laughs> squirted everywhere. On, on top of him? Yeah. <laughs> In his face? <laughs> <laughs> on his like body. It was, it was like, it wasn't a squirt. It was like a gush. It was like a waterfall. It was like a two liter can of, or bottle of soda, all, it was, and it lasted for like a long time. <laughs> it was crazy. So I felt like, yay. Wow. But there's steps I took to get there. So Tell us. I was a little tipsy, which is good because you want to feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Um, I gave him a BJ first because that really turns me on. And then I rode him reverse cowgirl for a while. Because that actually the the dick will rub against your G spot, right? Because for a if while. the dick is slightly curved and you're going like that, that's actually I mean I'm no <laughs> gynecologist. <laughs> for whatever reason, that was perfect. Because I think once you start stimulating the G spot, it fills up, right? Like the water. Yeah. I don't know what whatever it is. Uh, and then I turned around and started using the toy, and it was a, it was ten seconds after the toy, and it was like crazy. Wow! Like, so we were on top of the duvet fucking, and then I like when we were all done, I went to the bathroom, I came back, and he had like pulled the duvet aside to like get dry land. It wasn't dry; it wow. was soaked through. And good thing I have waterproof I mean, waterproof sheets. <laughs> sheets. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a thing. A lot of women who squirt have mentioned that to me. They say that they have to get the waterproof sheets. Now it's, it's like, oh, this is a nightmare. I want it to be like one of those cute squirters, you know? Yeah. Like you see, it's like, keep, keep, keep. And it's I, like three drops. No, this was like, whoa. I, I'm convinced. I said to Rosa that I don't think I can squirt. And she says you got to believe. Well, you I, might, you just, if you don't want to squirt and that's not one of your goals, then no, you're not going to squirt, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to, I don't know. Do, is it, was it a more powerful? full orgasm yeah okay <laughs> it was like a squirting plus clit plus inside orgasm all at the same time wow incredible yeah incredible. next time you should video it for yourself <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i mean yeah that'd not be for hot. not for us that'd but be for, hot. and um, uh it's funny because then I was talking to my girlfriend about it the next day. I was like, you guys, like I like, gave her a high five and her, uh, I was so proud of myself. And she was like, don't you sometimes just think like back and you're like, did I just pee? Like it's so much liquid. And you, there's a little part of you that's like, I think maybe I just peed. Just because- like you thought you didn't get raped. <laughs> right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like your brain wants to rationalize it because it's no. never happened, right? You squirted. Yeah, and uh, obviously 100% I did. Uh, otherwise, there would be pee everywhere. It was not pee. Yeah, But it's incredible. very, uh, wow. especially if it happens deliberately for the first time. Like, I in the past, like, I, I have squirted, but a guy was trying to make me squirt. It's a lot different, like, uh, when you are purposefully doing it because you want to do it, yeah, and then you're just letting go, yeah. That was, yeah. So that's yay, amazing. Yay, a first. Yeah, way to go. Yay, I'm mm-hmm. on my sexual journey. That's so Took fantastic. another step. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. So um, maybe I'll, I'll give it a try, perhaps. I mean, yeah. If you get curious about it, there's ways of easily doing it, but you have to want to. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that little toy. Oh my gosh. 
I need to get a little toy like that. I want more um, – I'm also looking for more waterproof toys too. Is this one waterproof? Totally. Submersible into the bath. We'll do a video about the little toy. Yeah, well, we need I'm to review building, this toy. Yeah, I'm building up my um, sex toy collection, and I, I think we have one coming soon as well in the mail. So uh, once we, I have like three or four I can talk about, then we'll do another video. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I know. I can't wait either. I'm experimenting with different lubes. Oh, yeah. Um, Because coconut oil is one thing. Like, actually, I haven't bought lube for, like, three years until now because I've just been using coconut oil all the time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You can massage your body with it. It's good for your pussy, all of that, but not great with condoms, right? Yep. Um, And also, if you do buy a really expensive toy, it's not recommended that you use because it can break down the... Silicone or whatever it's made yeah. out of. And my toy was $300, so I'm not going to risk it by using coconut oil. Exactly. So I have been wanting to experiment with some water-based lubes. Um, I did buy a water-based lube. It was expensive for a tiny little bottle. Um, and it was great to apply. Um, I actually literally just dumped it all over my body at, at one point. <laughs> it looked amazing and just rubbed it all over. Yeah. But it did dry, and I didn't use it with a partner, yeah. I should say. I only tested it on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really know, but it does dry a little weird. Like Mm. it almost dried on my skin, like cum does. Mm. And it got kind of really tacky, but when we went to tacky fast, it can be distracting. Yeah. yeah, Very distracting. Especially if you are using a condom and you're trying to have a good time and then it's like, oh wait, let me reapply the lube. And yeah, so there is partly that. So, so I would like some recommendations if anyone has any good lube recommendations. So DM us about that. Well, what Um, I think like to, to solve the problem that I just brought up is there's like these like round lube warmer and dispensers that all you do is put your hand under and it's automatic. Yeah. So there's no bottles involved. Yes. I'm sure it's expensive. Yeah. But you're just, you're fucking, you need some more and you just put your hand under. Yeah. Um, Oh, and this also brings up another point, um, which is sometimes hot and sometimes not. Um, You know, like guys will just, like you'll, you're, you're fucking, it gets, or you're, sorry, you're making out, you're playing, it gets to the point where there might be like penetration and you're about to reach for your lube because you just did your research and you bought a nice bottle of lube, and they just, like, spit on their hand and yeah. put, it, put it in your pussy. Oh, yeah. That's very common. That's so <laughs> fucking weird. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, like, a turn-on for the guy to do that. Spit is hot. It's also very convenient because in your mouth already. I've literally had my hand on the lube in my hand and set, looked up at the guy and said, do you want me to put some lube down there? And him be like, nah, spit. <laughs> And I'm just like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's not like that great. I mean, like, lube, like spit isn't the best no, lube. lube. That's what is, I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's got salt in it. So it actually probably dries you out. Yeah. Um, it might be good for literally one second. And like it, this could, ha- it could also be not so good for your pH balance or what's going on inside your vagina, right? Yeah, I mean, I have no idea. You have to be considerate of that, guys. I'm lucky because I have a very, like, I, it's like a water fountain down there. Um, <laughs> I barely need lube at all. Yeah. Um, but if I'm having sex for two hours, You're then gonna I'm going to fucking it. need some lube. I did see one product um, that interested me at Women's Wear. If anyone has experience, let me know. It, it was a silicone based lube, not water based. Mm. And it was very when I when I just tested it on my fingers, it was very slippery for a long time. So I'd be interested in trying that um, next. Yeah, we should get some. So I mean it doesn't have to be just water based, I don't think. And we are gonna try condoms too. I know we don't use them very often, but <laughs> we promise we're gonna test them out. So we're gonna find some guys really? who want to wear them. We're, oh is that what we're gonna do? Oh I don't wow, know. That's quite the mission. Honestly <laughs> We bought a bunch of condoms, but I was Yeah, finding I, a guy to wear them might be the hardest part. I didn't know we were actually going to use them on guys. I was hoping to. I thought we were just going to open them up ourselves. Yeah, I mean, we could do that too. Yeah, you're right. Um, we should test condoms on guys. Yeah. I want to. I do want to hear more feedback. That's something that we're... I mean, I about. was absolutely shocked that you were... Like, Rosa was like, you know... Um, because I never go buy condoms. Obviously, I don't use them. I'm just kidding, you guys. I use condoms sometimes. But I was, Rosa says, you know, when you go buy condoms, there's only two sizes. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah, that's what And on then my I looked by the way. at the store, and she was absolutely right. It was extra large or large. 
or something or regular. Regular or extra large. Um, yeah. And it was mar- like it was so crazy how they're marketing these condoms to guys. Yeah, and it's, it's so unfair. Like our breasts get like A cup to G cup and everything in between. You can even get if one of your breasts is smaller than the other, like custom made cups. And then uh, your dick, you know, ev- no two dicks are the same. Why would all these condoms be the it's same crazy. size? It's crazy. There is no two dicks the same. Every pussy and dick is different. Yeah. Every single fucking one. Yeah, is like a, a snowflake, right? Yeah. There is not a dick that is the same. So for there to be literally two condom sizes, I was in absolute shock. Mm-hmm. And like Rosa says, it's like, you know, you go buy makeup now. Well, there's like you, all the top makeup brands have 50 different shades of foundation. Yeah. Because there's that many different skin colors in the world. Yeah, to be inclusive. To be inclusive. Yet guys are getting the short end of the dick stick. Yeah, Yeah, well, I think the point is is that that doesn't make you want to wear a condom. Exactly. Right? It's like, oh, if you can uh, find one that really works for you, um, that you you know is your size and the right, um, like, circumference and stuff, and you have that brand, um, that might be helpful. Uh, And women's wear actually has, uh, I think, 15 different sizes um, of widths and lengths and uh, different made out of different materials uh, that you can go and you can buy them in uh, like one time trial size, right? So you can go try them all on on your dick before you buy a whole package, before you go out and fuck anything at all. And then you know you have that confidence behind you. Uh, right? Yeah. Important to try the condom before you go and fuck. I've been, literally, I've watched a guy roll up to my house with a huge fucking dick and, ha- oh, here's the condom. He literally, do- it doesn't even get a centimeter on his dick. Because you had it at your house, right? Yeah, that's right. You're like, this is all but I have. But he didn't bring one f- appropriate for his ginormous dick, yeah. right? Uh, which is a little bit kind a of bit strange of a, too, right? Yeah, he should have known better. Yeah. Um, I did a poll yesterday on my Instagram Ro- at Rosa Borkowitz and it was one of the questions was do you talk about whether you've been tested recently before you have a new partner? Um, and that I think that conversation I would include are we going to use condoms or not? Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people said no, it's too awkward. <laughs> But isn't it more awkward to, like, have to go to get tested for chlamydia? Or get gonorrhea in your throat? Yeah. I mean, well, I... I mean, the condoms not going to help you with that, but... But but also, we're all... I've done it. Like, I've... Th- I've there's been lots of times. And um, one of the reasons that I like condoms is because if you don't want to have that conversation, then just use a condom. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, this isn't fail safe advice by any means, but I think that it's a great way to start. It's like if you don't feel comfortable with this person yet, but you're going to have a one night stand or you just met them on Tinder, bring condoms that fit your dick or have condoms at your home, women who, you know, that are maybe a bunch of different sizes so that there's no um, issues. And then guys, if the girl says she wants to use a condom or she doesn't want to have sex, don't freaking throw a fit. Don't convince her not to use a condom just put one on and fuck her with that and then realize that that's how it is yeah and then maybe that'll spur the new conversation well oh why do you want to wear your condom oh well you know i've gotten tested recently but we haven't had that conversation yet it's like okay well why don't we have this that conversation now and then maybe you won't have to have use the condom but if you're not comfortable having that conversation, then you best be bringing your own condom that fits your dick. Whatever. Yeah. And Small, big, whatever. And the other thing, too, is, like, guys often complain about how um, a condom feels on their dick, how maybe it, like, prevents them from feeling certain things. Um, but when we went to women's wear, we David uh, was helping us, and... We got a little bit educated that if the condom doesn't fit perfectly right, if it's slightly too loose or even slightly too tight, um, it's really going to affect the way that it, the guy's dick feels. Yeah. So that's why it's so important to find one that fits. Yeah. Because then it's going to feel better. You oh. might enjoy it a little bit more. Also, right? and this is a tip that we learned in, uh, or that at least I learned in sex ed years ago. So uh, when I, I don't know, maybe grade seven. So I obviously ignored it and never did it, but I'm just, I'm just thinking about it right now. You got to lube up your dick, then put the condom on, then lube up the condom. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, and it Don't won't fully yes. lube your dick up, but put lube at the tip of your dick so that um, the condom will slide around and you'll f- feel that wet sensation instead of feeling like a yeah, exactly. you know, balloon on your dick that's yeah. like sucking sucking all the air and life out of you. Absolutely. You could lube it up and then put it on. Um, that might that might be the trick that makes it tolerable. And also, I find it a huge I mean, I don't let guys come inside me um, unless it's like the first day of my fucking period, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, But one thing I do like about condoms is the feeling of a guy coming inside of me, which is such a rare feeling, and it's so intimate, Mm -hmm. and it's it's very hot. I find that, I mean, usually I'm begging for the cum on my face or in my (laughs) mouth, so it's actually kind of different um, to have that feeling, and I really do enjoy it. So, like, usually I always bitch about condoms, right? But, I mean, I do think that's a bonus of wearing one is being able to come inside of her. Yeah, and like, cause we are the pull out girls, right? Yeah, pull out that's, queen. That's my game. That's the pull out game strong. But uh, if the guy was wearing a condom, they could, you know, you could come, come at the same time. You could come at the same time, which yeah. is and very, very erotic. Yeah, yeah, I love that shit. Oh my god! Like if if that doesn't happen very often, but when it has, um, you it's get incredible. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully you're wearing a condom, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that, that's amazing yeah. when that happens. I oh love that. Oh my God, it's crazy. Yeah. You, like, th- all the times that that's happened, I'll never forget. So maybe if you're kind of being negative, like we often are about wearing condoms, maybe look at it in that way. And it's really important that guys, you do your homework separate by yourself, figure out what works for you. That way you have it ready to go and yeah. you have a good experience. Yeah. And like if you if you're the kind of person that a regular Durex condom is always breaking and you're fucking a girl and you come inside her and you come you pull out and it's a broken condom with cum everywhere, you need to go to the store and get a condom that works for you so that you have the confidence to, you know, know that she'll know she's safe, you know that you're safe. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because I, I talked about this before, you know, I was sleeping with a guy uh, and we hadn't had the conversation because neither of us wanted to. And then he was fucking me and the condom broke. Yeah. And then it's, and then it's like, well, we better have this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so if, if he had been wearing one that really fit that he was comfortable with, that he was, I mean, of course, again, it's not fail safe. It could still break. But I think that it's a, when it fits, when you're, maybe it's going to take a little bit of time to figure out which one's best for you. But you that's, you know, another step towards like safety. Yeah, definitely. And I think too, I mean, women probably don't mention this very often, but I mean, they always keep, we mentioned earlier, women are great at keeping secrets and sometimes um, they feel uncomfortable. And I think that if you don't have that conversation and they're um, not u- you're not using a condom, sometimes it could stop a woman from experiencing full pleasure mm. because in the back of her mind, I've experienced this. All you're thinking about is like, oh God, you know, I should be wearing a con- using a condom right now. I didn't have this conversation. I don't feel uh, totally 100 about this, and then I can't focus on having. And there's no way I'm gonna have a fucking orgasm. Yeah. Right. I'm totally distracted. Yeah. Um, but if you're if you're safe, you know that the guy. I mean, it's not the condom could break all these things could happen but generally that kind of helps you feel a lot more comfortable and then you can sort of let go a little bit more and maybe have a more pleasurable experience yeah or there's the other people who you know they have a great time because there's it's exciting it's naughty to not use a condom and then for three weeks it's a shame spiral and you have anxiety because you don't know if you got something you don't know if you're pregnant you have to go you know you're probably hungover the next day you have to drag yourself to get the morning after pill and you still think that herpes is a problem (laughs) you might have it even though you probably already have it (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) The point is things are going through your mind that don't need to go through your mind. You're causing your own anxiety, whether it's at the time or afterwards. So have good communication and make sure that you test all these things um, before you do it in the bedroom. Yeah, exactly. And and get consent. Yeah, consent, consent, consent. (laughs) Yes means yes. (laughs) Okay, thanks so much for listening. We're going to go drink some rosé.